Hey, a pleasant good evening, everybody. It was a great evening for Phillies baseball as they continue to ring that bell tonight. One courtesy of our 21-year-old catcher, Rafael Marchand, who hit a bomb to right field that would have been even farther without the wind. And then in the first game, we, of course, had Bryce, who hit a bomb to right field that, again, would have been even farther without the win. The first game, we obviously took handily. Um, Zach Eflin pitched his best game of the season by four against a very solid offensive team in the Blue Jays. And we were able to win 7 nothing on a complete game because the seven-inning games are so weird. They count as complete games, but if you have a perfect game or no hitter, that doesn't count, which I don't understand that, but that's the way it is. Um... Other guys that really stepped up and did well in the first game. Moniak drew a walk in that game. Phil Goslin had two hits to get back on track and get going. And also had an RBI. Diddy just continued to do his thing going three for four with a ribby in that game. And then he, of course, had that big double in game two as well. And then Harper did great with uh, two RBIs and two runs scored in game one. So, in game one, we were clicking, and Zach Eflin was money, and that's what won us the game. Everybody chipped in for us, and Eflin was able to just destroy it, and Diddy Gregorius is a doubles machine, and another guy that the Phillies have to, have to, have to re-sign. And then, as I said, Knapp also got a big hit. He got going and drove in guys after struggling yesterday and leaving seven on base. So it's huge to see our backup catcher, who's been money this year as well, be able to come through for us in that situation. So that was big for him. He got a triple there that scored Diddy and Phil Goslin, which when you hit a ball down the line, it's almost set in stone that Goose is going to score because he's fast as lightning that's why it's nice to have guys like Kingery back when you also have Goslin who is getting overplayed but uh, is now able to hone it back in and have a good game today to really kind of get his swing back in line again at least to me it seemed and then Boehm of course continued to do his thing and singled and continues to be a menace he has the most hits not as a rookie but as a whole in the National League in September so this dude is just killing it so those would be the stars of game one with the primary star of course being Zach Eflin the dude pitch a complete game he definitely earns the primary star and then in game two a guy that provided a huge spark when we were down by three even the game is definitely one of the stars of the game and called another good game is a Marcon I mean you can't blame the catcher when Hembre blows and can't locate a pitch so uh, he called a very good game. Uh, David Hale actually looked pretty good as a long man getting a start. Uh, he threw 34 pitches and looked really good. Jojo Romero had his first really bad outing, and that's bound to happen. He's a rookie. David Phelps came in for a third of an inning. Uh, so did Hembre, but uh, that's because he did terrible and only recorded a third of an inning because he only recorded one out. And then Brogdon was able to give us one and two thirds, actually solid innings. He walked a couple people, but then worked around it. He looked good, NBA, but definitely looked like he's a guy that you can develop. And when he fine tunes his location with the stuff he has, could be a pretty good reliever. And Hector has always scared us with two walks, but was able to get it done. Now, in terms of at the plate, uh, the youngsters after Diddy singled and continued to get it done, and McCutcheon homered. Uh, Teoscar Hernandez homer to put them down by one, then Vladdy got a single to even up the game, and then uh, Santiago Espinal got a single to score Vladdy, and that's what put them up 3-2. to two. Kevon Biggio also singled on a line drive to center field for Quinn to Quinn, which scored Espinal and Panic, which put them up five to two. But that was until Mark Khan, the youngster, killed one to right field and evened it up, which was like they said in the broadcast, his first professional home run. This kid is very similar to Chooch Carlos Ruiz. That's why uh, everybody loves this kid. Chooch started as a second baseman. Mark Khan started as a as a shortstop. And uh, then became a catcher. He has a great cannon of an arm. We saw that on the steal um, in the ninth inning when the guy was definitely going to be safe, but he still threw a money throw to second base. And then uh, Grichik, after that, after Mark on hit a homer, got a sack fly, which put the Jays up 6-5. Then Jansen walked to put them up 7-5. And then, of course, Bryce Train, who seems to be right back on track in Bryce Harper, 
continued to get going after a big couple days. He then had a big double to even up the score. And then who else? Alec, Alec Bohm ends up giving us the winning run. This kid is not phased at all. He's in the three spot and still owning it there. I mean, this kid's just money. And when before we thought Cronenworth was definitely going to win the rookie of the year. And uh, that would have been my guy as well. Obviously, since Mills threw a no-hitter, you have to throw him uh, in the equation too because he was pitching really good. The problem is he's a very overage rookie at 28, so sometimes they do look at that. But either way, it's definitely not a runaway now for Cronenworth like it was about a week and a half ago because Bohm has been money since getting called up. And he's at least even with Jake right now, in my opinion, if not because of his September potentially in some voters' eyes, probably above him. So... We'll see what shakes out there, but if Bone keeps doing what he's doing, he definitely has a chance to be the rookie of the year. But this has been a reaction to two great games. The first time we continue to ring that bell after two Phillies wins in a sweep of a doubleheader since 2012 against the Colorado Rockies. So this is huge. Hopefully this can get the team going momentum-wise. Also, Kapler's team and the Giants, uh, who went above us yesterday, were losing 4 to nothing last time I checked against those Oakland Athletics. So... This has been a good night for the Phillies. Uh, the other only team that uh, definitely won I saw was the Braves because they were killing it. And then the Marlins, unfortunately, uh, came back in Game 2 and had a very good game against the Nationals. They're up 14-3 to right now. But the Phillies took care of business. Like Girardi said, they do own their own destiny. And if they can build momentum, all they have to do now is obviously win one of the next two to win the series. They got through the hardest part, which was a doubleheader, and we finally got through it unscathed. It's been years, obviously, since 2012. It's been eight years, so this is great to see. This is the momentum we want to build on. Now we just have to keep building on it and figure out who in God's name is pitching uh, tomorrow. And, or not tomorrow, tomorrow we have Velasquez, who is pitching Sunday after Vinny Velo, excuse me, because obviously we're going to need Velasquez to pitch solid against Toronto tomorrow because we just use a lot of our bullpen today. We did save Blake Parker, who we didn't use, so you do have him available tomorrow, but obviously you're not going to want to have Velasquez pitch a typical he gets into the third inning or fourth inning and then blows up because you're going to need him to go deeper tomorrow with the way we use our pen. So hopefully Velasquez is hopefully able to have one of his better starts, if not best start of the season, and we can lock this series up tomorrow, which is surprising to me because, as I said in the preview video and the recap of the Phillies um, match series with Andrew last night, uh, you can still check that out if you want. It's a couple videos back on the Sports Mag News channel. I didn't think we would win this series because the Phillies didn't show me any signs to show that we would win this series. Well, right now, we're definitely in a good line to win this series, splitting, uh, or, or excuse me, sweeping the doubleheader. I'm so used to saying splitting doubleheaders because uh, we've done three of them this year or just lost them outright. But we swept this one. We're looking great. Let's continue ringing that bell. And come on, Vinny Velo, pitch a good game tomorrow, and let's get us that series win. Have a great and safe night, everybody. Go Phillies. Continue to ring that bell. Peace out, everyone.